infographics. This is not going to be another history lesson, I promise. The cool thing about infographics is that it has been used in all kinds of things. We're talking everything from governmental institutions to your fifth grade homework. But did you know that infographics go way back? Like caveman sketching his favorite lunch kind of back? So let's take it from the top, shall we? The 30,000 BCs. That, my human friend, is when it all started. You know, when your great 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 grandparents were communicating through cave paintings. You can consider them the real OGs of storytelling. You can tell that those paintings weren't just some random scribbles. We can't be 100% sure, but some of them depicted erupted volcanoes from an area nearby. Yeah, even our ancestors were into abstract paintings. But it wasn't just rock paintings. We can trace the origins of maps all the way back to that period of time. And we all know maps are just infographics in a suit and tie. 3000 BC. Cue in the Egyptians with the hieroglyphics. Infographics that made sense, not only to a small group of people, but to the entire population at the time. Things kept evolving slowly, but surely. Like the first Babylonian world map in 600 BC, and the Dunhuang Atlas sometime in the 7th century AD. Fast forward to the 14th century. The Renaissance Revolution. In this era, what we do now was beginning to come together. We here at Preslab believe in uh, mixing information and design in a field we like to call, well, information design. And in the 14th century, artists like Leonardo da Vinci used detailed diagrams to convey scientific concepts, unknowingly starting a trend in information design. Da Vinci, you trendsetter, you. Then numbers came in the way and made everything a lot more complicated. Ring a bell? Like in that math class when letters came in and algebra became a thing? It's never been the same since. 18th century. You still with me? Cool, it's about to go down. All I can tell y'all is that it's about to go down. In the 1700s, a guy named Joseph Priestley illustrated the first ever timeline that included over 2,000 historical figures. The guy's a visionary. Then, the turnaround point for modern infographics came in 1786 when, drumroll please, Mr. William Playfair, often considered the father of all infographics, plotted the price of wheat against the price of labor in the UK. The adoption of infographics began when the plot proved useful, since it revealed that the wages were rising a lot slower than the price of wheat. And Mr. Playfair did not stop there. He is no one-hit wonder. No, 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 sir. He then published the Commercial and Political Atlas, which featured line graphs, bar charts, histograms, the whole shebang. Then, in 1801, he created the first ever pie chart. You're welcome, consultants everywhere. Which led us to the 19th century. But before we dive in, hit that subscribe button and that bell so you can know more about the creative industry. The 1830s saw the invention of database social sciences. Buzzfeed quizzes! Andre Michael Guiri, a French lawyer, used these Buzzfeed quizzes to showcase moral statistics. And even though it was a statistical study, it was still controversial. Why? Because it challenged mainstream ideologies and wisdom at the time. The map showed that illiteracy and crime were not as connected as people thought. And in the 1800s, that was a big no-no. The 19th century had a few more iconic moments in the infographic history. In 1854, a hero that goes by the name of Jon Snow, no, no, not that Jon Snow. They used the map to plot cholera incidents and noticed a spike near a water pump in Broad Street. Once he visualized that, it was easy for the city to take a decision to close down that area. See? Infographics save lives! Someone you may be familiar with is Florence Nightingale. What you may not know was that she was as good at statistics as she was at being a nurse. She created a coxcomb chart to highlight the number and causes of death for each month during the war. She then used this chart to persuade Queen Victoria to improve the conditions of the military hospitals at the time. And the saving lives continues. A few maps here and a couple charts there. And we find ourselves in the 20th century. Starting in 1933, when Harry Beck created the first ever map for the London Tube using only lines to show the fastest routes. It was then that infographics were being used to improve simple but effective quality of life things. Jumping to 1972, we have one of the biggest achievements in the history of infographics. And that's the invention of pictograms by Otto Acher. These pictograms led directly to the invention of public signs and, fun fact, the modern day stick figure. How do you know that infographics are so universal? When NASA uses them to try to communicate with aliens. When sending the Pioneer 10 and 11 spacecraft to space, they had aluminum plaques on them. And guess what was on these plaques? Infographics. They had illustrations that conveyed messages to aliens about the human race and where they are in respect to the galaxy. Then we get the birth of data visualization by Edward Tuft. 
The guy was a pioneer in the world of information design, and he developed something called data ink ratio, which is basically a measurement of information communicated through graphical elements. Tuff strongly believed that any visual element not communicating specific information should go bye bye. He called it heart junk. But on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we had a fellow named Nigel Holmes, who believed that zhuzhing up your data with pretty illustrations and nice decorations made it a lot more digestible. Which, I agree. And now, for this century. Today, the modern understanding of infographics is using visual cues to convey information. Could be as simple as a hand in a red hexagon that says stop, or as complex as a visual analysis of a global health crisis. Either way, you're gonna want a professional designing your infographic. Which is where we come in. When we talk infographics, we know more than just the history. We know the ins and outs on how to deliver your information in the best way possible. So, my human friends, if you're looking to up your infographics game and get ahead of the competition, click the first link in the description. See you next time!